In this lesson, I'll show you how to make your own curved surface, like a pot or a vase. The idea is you sketch a cross-section outline, and then in Pavre, you can spin that outline around the vertical or Y axis to get your object. So what I did here is I sketched a cross-section of a pot, and I put that sketch on graph paper so that I could add some points to it. So I chose some points on the right-hand side of the sketch. In all, I took eight points. That should be enough to give the general idea. Now, in addition to those eight points, we have to add a couple of other points that indicate how the curve would continue if it were continued. That gives Pavre the idea of what the slopes are going to be when it draws this sketch. And then I assigned the coordinates to those points based on the graph paper. And once I've done that, I can use those coordinates in Pavre to make my pot. With those two additional points, we now have 10 points. We should also observe that the width of this pot is 8 units, because it's 4 to the right and 4 to the left, and the height of the pot is 6 units. So we should move the camera back somewhat so that we'll be able to see it without having to scale it, and maybe the light source too. To save some time, I already put this information into a file. I moved the camera back to 50 units, and I set its location a little bit more to the right and a little more up than we had before. I also changed the light source so it's 60 units back and uh, moved over in the horizontal and vertical position somewhat and kept the same sky sphere that we had before. Now here's how we set up that pot. We type SOR, that stands for surface of revolution, and the beginning bracket as with anything, and then the number of points that we're going to use, which in this case is 10 points. And then I copied the coordinates of the points, the two-dimensional coordinates, in angled brackets, starting at the bottom and going to the very top. The very first point there was that red point indicating where it would continue, and the same with the last point. And just to make things simple, I assigned the pigment of this pot to be red, and an ambience of 0.5. So that's how I can make Pavre draw our pot. Let's run it and see what happens. Aha! There you see the pot. It's a nice bright red pot. Now, one thing to observe is the top of it is one solid piece. We could put the keyword open somewhere in the surface of revolution. That'll show the inside, but I want to show you another way to do this because we're ultimately going to put a picture on this. What we can do is use a cylinder to carve out a hole. We don't have to go all the way down to the bottom of the pot. We could do it like this. Let's see, that's a cylinder that's centered at the origin and will make its height a little bit bigger than the uh, top part of the pot, which is 3 units, so let's say we make the height of that cylinder 3.1 units. Let me show you what the cylinder would look like along with the pot before we actually carve it out. What we can do is put that cylinder after the pot, so type that in. I just did a quick paste here. I decided to make the cylinder extend a little more above the pot so that it has a base point at the origin and its cap point is 3.2 units up. And I made its radius 3, which is consistent with that diagram. Let's take a look and see what this looks like. So there you can see this cylinder. I made it a white cylinder. It looks gray at the top. But that's because there's not much light hitting it, and I don't have very much ambience on it. Now what we want to do is use that cylinder. We want to carve the pot out with that cylinder. In Pavre, you can carve something out by taking the difference 
of the two objects. So the way this works is before the surface of revolution object, the SOAR objects, you, you type the word difference and put an opening bracket. And then after the cylinder object, you put a closing bracket for the difference. So you do it like this. Let's say end difference. And what that will do, it will subtract or remove the second object, the cylinder, from the first object, which is that surface of revolution. But it will maintain the white color of the cylinder when it does that. Take a look at this. There you have it. So now we've carved this pot out. This cylinder actually only extends down to here. So if we look way up above, we would see the bottom much sooner than we want. But for our purposes, this is good enough. Now let's make the pot more interesting by applying an image map to it. Now I took a little trouble here. I went into Microsoft Word, actually, and designed an image map or an image that could be wrapped around the pot like a cylinder. So let's change the pigment from the simple color red to an image map containing that pot design like this. So we'll say in the pigment image map JPEG pot design point JPG and we'll use a map type 2 which is cylindrical. Let's take a look and see how this goes. Hmm. The problem here is that image map gets repeated over and over as you go around because the height of this vase here or this pot isn't one. In order to make an image map work the way we want it to, we have to put the cylinder or whatever object we're mapping it onto right at the origin. The bottom has to be at the origin and the top has to be one unit up. So we're going to have to do some scaling. Now there's an easy way we can do this. What we can do is before we apply the pigment, we can scale this thing. Let's see. What we want to do is make it one unit tall instead of six units tall. So scale it by one-sixth and translate it up half a unit because it was down there. And then after we apply the pigment and the finish, we scale it back up again. But we have to translate it back to its original position before we do that. So translate, let's see, translate zero negative 0.5 in other words 0.5 down because we translated it 0.5 up and then scale it back to the proper size so scale to six so what i did here is i scaled that surface of revolution our pot to one sixth of its size which makes it one unit tall but the problem was it was below and above the x-axis so I had to also translate it up half a unit and then after I apply the image map and the finish I translate it back down again and scale it back up to six units. Let's see how this looks. Aha! That does the job. So the moral of this is that if the object you're dealing with is not one unit tall and its base is not at the origin and you're applying a cylindrical map, you have to scale it so it is one unit tall and move it so the base is at the origin before you apply that image map. One more detail that we could consider is if you don't like the position of the picture on that pot. You could always rotate the pot a little bit. Let's say we rotate it. You want to rotate it about the uh, y-axis, so zero on the x-axis. Let's say we do, oh, I'm just guessing at this. Let's say negative 20 degrees on the y-axis. 
and see how this looks. Okay, that brings this piece right in the center. What if we rotate it positive 20 degrees? Then that brings this piece more to the center. If you want to move it a little more, you could rotate it, say, 30 degrees. So you can rotate it in any direction that you want about the y-axis to move this picture over to whatever position you would like it to have at the end. You might have noticed that there's some distortion of the picture. Let me run it again just so you see what I'm talking about. In particular, these lines here, which were straight, kind of curve around as they go to the bottom. The problem is that we used a cylindrical map, and the pot we drew is actually a little more like a sphere than a cylinder. So let's consider using spherical coordinates, or a spherical map, instead of a cylindrical map. With a cylindrical map, the base had to be at the origin, and the cylinder had to be one unit tall. That's why we had to do some scaling and translating in order to get the map to go around the right way. With a spherical map, the only requirement is that the origin is the center of the sphere. So what I did here is I created another file going back to the very beginning where we just have the surface of revolution and I changed the map type to one which is spherical. Now this surface of revolution that created is centered at the origin so this ought to work. Let's see what happens. Okay now you can see from the view that the top of this uh, object, the top of the image gets wrapped around to the North Pole. And similarly, the bottom would be wrapped around to the South Pole. So this particular image that we used does not really fit properly on the sphere. So what I did is I used a Photoshop program to add a border at the top and a border at the bottom. Now that took some guesswork. We could analyze it mathematically to see what's going on, but why spend that much time? So, depending on the size of the border at the top and the size of the border at the bottom, I was able to come up with this particular design. And if we put this into our Pavre program, we can see a little better what's going on. So, I'm going to change the image file there, pot design, to pot design 1B, which has the blue border on the top and the bottom. And let's run it and see what that looks like. Okay, that took a little experimenting to figure out how wide to make those blue borders. Notice the top fits exactly as we want it to. The bottom overlaps a little bit. But that looks like a good design if we just change the color of the bottom from blue to this color here and change the color of the top to white, we should see a better picture of our object. So what I did is I went back to the Photoshop program and I changed the colors of the top to white and the bottom I added more of this color instead of the blue that we had before and I called it Pot Design 1C. So let's go back to our program and change it from Pot Design 1B to Pot Design 1C and see how that looks. Ah, yes. Notice the white looks a bit grayish. That's because I didn't give it very much ambience and the light source is not shining right down on the top. Okay, so that looks pretty good. All we need to do now is to carve out with our cylinder this piece right here. The cylinder we can use should have a radius matching the surface of revolution object because we didn't do any scaling. So I did that in another file. I put in the keyword difference here 
And after the surface of revolution, I put a cylinder that's centered at the origin and is 3.1 units tall and has a radius of 3. I put the pigment white and set the ambience to 0.4 and then ended the difference. So take a look at this. And there we have it. We've carved out the hole and we have the lines here that uh, look a little straighter than before. Let me rotate it a little bit. Uh, we could rotate the whole thing, the whole difference, or we could just rotate the sore object there. Let me rotate the sore object. Say we rotate it, oh, about the y-axis, vertical 30 degrees. And that way we can better see what the design looks like. That places our design right at the center. Now you'll notice, unlike the cylindrical mapping, the spherical mapping makes these lines a bit straighter. That looks a little more faithful to how the object might look if we actually took a picture of the true object there. Here's a comparison of what we did before with the cylindrical map on the left and what we did just now with the spherical map on the right. For the spherical map, we had to change the image, add a border at the top for the north pole and a border at the bottom, or extend the bottom a little bit for the south pole. But otherwise, the spherical map was a little easier to deal with because we did not have to go through that scaling and translating to get it in the right position, as long as it was centered at the origin. Notice the spherical map looks a little better. So that's enough for this lesson. In the next lesson, we'll consider making a coffee mug. The challenge there is to come up with some kind of a shape that represents the handle to the mug.